Welcome to the 2022 year-end extravaganza presented by Orby. Featuring your hosts, Paul J. Daly and Kyle Mount C. With guests, Atul Patel, Alex Vetter, Liza Borshes, Damon Lester, Scott Simons, Santosh Viswanathan, Peter Fong, Steve Greenfield, and Brian Finkelmeyer. On street appraisals by Brian Kramer. Music by Al Kutri and the Troublemakers. The voice of automotive, me, Michael Cirillo. And now, please welcome your hosts, Paul J. Daly and Kyle Mountseer. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. But before we get started, we want to thank our presenting sponsor, Orby, for being the first to step up to make this wonderful event happen. Let's hear it for Orby. We also want to thank our other sponsors, uh, whom you will see and hear from throughout the show. Uh, we couldn't have done this without you. And how about the guest list that they just read? I mean, thank you to all of our Ride and Die guests for coming all the way here to my hometown, Nashville to be with us here in person this afternoon. And let's not forget about the Asoto community who came to be a part of the live audience as well as you joining us online. Hey, and how about this band, ladies and gentlemen? It's Al Kutri and the Troublemakers. Yeah. All right, you can't talk about the last 12 months without acknowledging one thing. It's been a year. Yeah, we'll call it that. It's been we'll a year. That. <laughs> of course, for every little bad, we got a little good. The pandemic continues to show us that despite the physical distance, we can continue to find strength within our community, specifically because Brian Benstock is in our community and his biceps make us all feel safe. <laughs> biceps, <laughs> biceps aside, that really is what the automotive industry is, a community of innovators, from OEM leaders like Jim Farley and Mary Barra, to necessary disruptors like Carvana and Tesla, to the dealer network, looking for new ways to sell the same 14 used cars we circulated all year. <laughs> so true, so true. And speaking of chip shortages, some of these dealership amenities are getting out of hand. If it goes down with Russia, or more likely still, if it gets any worse with Conway, you know where you find us, right there at Beaver Toyota pitching a tent because they got enough chips and snacks to host five Super Bowl parties a day for at least the rest of our lives. At least the rest of our <laughs> lives. Uh, we had to spend those record profits on something, right? And with all the legacy OEMs bringing their electric dreams to life, like their names should be Mary Frankenstein or Thor Farley, you know, they forgot to do one thing. Anybody want to guess? They forgot to build enough cars for us to sell. <laughs> But let's be fair, let's be fair. There seemed to be a whole lot more optimism without really knowing what was going to happen at the beginning of this year. It's easy to forget there was metaverse chatter. Remember that. And crypto craze with a fever that. pitch. I mean, goodness, Brian Kramer was out here sleeping in an Oculus every night, and Bob Lanham was only two signatures away from changing his name to Meta Bob. Believe it or not, you know there were even crypto exchange founders that weren't in handcuffs at the beginning of the year. Really? Yeah. But it's hard to find these days. But did you know um, who did legally did change their name in 2022? Who's that? Facebook. Ah. CEO Mark Zuckerberg went all in on his first idea since launching MySpace Part 2. He launched the metaverse. But even great ideas like digital beach parties can't make every quarter a good one. Facebook had its first ever user drop in Q1, but they weren't alone. Netflix, who had our backs in the worst of lockdowns, pulled the password sharing rug out from under us, Kyle, you can't share my password anymore. I guess when the going gets tough, the tough put ads on the reruns of The Office. And gosh, we can't get to the end of this without talking about Elon Musk. I know. He's, uh, he's also had a bit <laughs> of a year. year. He's I had mean, a year. You have a man we can all thank for making digital payments mainstream. PayPal. He's out here launching rockets, headed for Mars, bringing the world high speed inter satellite internet 
sets the bar for electrification production, selling a ridiculous amount of Teslas at margins, let's be honest. Dealers would love to get their hands eight, on. Eight times the average. Turns out nobody can disrupt the disruptor like the disruptor himself. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah. Wish we could see the picture that everybody else <laughs> can see. At a Sodu, but we do offer, like to offer a lighthearted take on the reality we share. And while maintaining awareness that in every piece we report on, in every company we mention, people's lives are affected by the change. And we believe there is no industry better prepared to embrace the challenges and make a meaningful difference than the automotive dealers we are proud to stand with every single day. Yeah, because the reality is innovative dealers are always willing to disrupt. Take apart what worked yesterday and put it all back together to serve people today and tomorrow. When the pandemic locked us down, local dealers kept us moving. As big corporations are laying people off, dealers are creating and sustaining jobs. And with the uncertainty of things like inflation, interest rates, and the supply chain, dealers are driving their roots deeper by blessing their associates, caring for their communities, and providing stability for people across this nation. Right. How can we not clap for that? Let's go. We can clap for that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a great show planned for you. So let's hear it one more time for Al Kutri and the Troublemakers. Let's go. Cirillo. Hey, hey. Look at How what are you doing guy? over there? What's going on? I didn't even see you there. I love this place. He's too short. Literally, it feels him. like home. Literally, everybody here is sitting on one of my grandmother's couches. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see the audience, but we got a little bit of retro in us today. And, uh, you know, we were talking, actually, that, that your grandma's couches, they used to have, like, plastic on them. At least is a quarter inch. Plastic. I think. I think that was so we didn't get uh, asbestos poisoning. <laughs> yeah, let's... <laughs> That's Let's amazing. Hope so. That's Let's unbelievable. Hope so. Gosh, you know, we we really have quite had quite a year. We walked through some of that stuff just a second ago, and yes, we poked fun, but it has been quite a year. Record profits and crazy stuff with technology, and we've been up and down with metaverse and crypto, and like all that is ancient history at this point. Feels like it. It, it feels like it, it. really does feel yeah. like it. It's amazing when you think we were looking at some of the the news headlines from back in 2017, and the headlines were literally reading that by 2022, no one will be owning their own vehicle anymore. That's wild. For, for those of you who have been in the industry a while, remember those NADAs, remember those instances where people were you know, saying it's about cost per mile, not monthly payment, and everything seemed like autonomous vehicles were gonna be whisking us around. Well, here we are in 2022, and there's not a single one to be found, really. Not really. Really. Yeah. And so, so this year, there have been a lot of predictions around the year 2030. So what we decided is that we would make a list of the most popular predictions in 2030 and share them with you. <laughs> Dramatized, of course. Here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> in the year 2030, in the year 2030. In a cage match between Tesla and all other OEMs for EV dominance, Jim Farley floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. In the year 2030. With Hyundai and GM leading the way, all automakers replace C's and Q with Q's and use bold font anytime the letters EV are found in a word. In the year 2030. Customers plead with dealers to stop using pop-ups on their website in nationwide protest, citing healthcare costs rising due to the pointer finger example. In the year 2030. Coffee shops are on the brink of shutdown due to every dealership now having a coffee shop and 33 charging stations. Rest stop confirmed. In the year 2030. Jay Leno confirms, comes forward and says all his cars in his garage were actually EVs all the time. Psych. In the year 2030. Mazda and Toyota be like, nah, bruh. In the year 2035. Huh? Huh? 
In the year 2035, thanks to California, gas will cease to exist in the universe. In the year 2030, in the year 2030. It's very nice, very nice. Feel good. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Michael, tell us what's up next. Our first guest is the CEO of Carter Myers Automotive and a fourth generation dealer principal. Her leadership has accelerated the growth of the Carter Myers Group with new stores, deep investments in culture, community, and people. And we're delighted to welcome her to the show. Please welcome Lies Abortion. Oh, we're gonna do like, oh, look at this video. Thank you. <laughs> we got you a present for Christmas. It's a whole couch. Why, thank you. I don't often sit well. down long enough to have a whole couch. <laughs> right. Absolutely. It's like every other auto dealer. Well, thank you for joining us today, making a trip to Nashville just for the show. Uh, it's the Very best nice. way to start the next couple days of the holidays. Yes, for sure, for sure. Well, tell us, do you have any family holiday traditions you can share with the industry? What do you guys do? So I'm definitely a tradition person. And we've got fun things we do in the stores, but at home, so I now have a 17-year-old and a 14-year-old. And so Santa sometimes loses its spirit as they get in these ages. A little bit. But we still, on Christmas morning when they wake up, they have to sit at the top of the stairs with me while their dad goes and lights the fire, starts the Christmas music, and comes and tells us that Santa forgot us this year. <laughs> Every, Every year. year. <laughs> and I expect That's that amazing. they better laugh again this year. <laughs> right. You brought, you brought your son with you today. I did. Where's He's he actually at? with your son somewhere uh, watching how you all are producing this incredible show. Valuable skills. Hey, Valuable skills. Valuable yeah. skills. Teach them how they learn. I love it. Well, cool. Yeah. Um, I, we wanted to kind of just talk a little bit about the, the Carter Myers organization has gone through a significant amount of change in the last 12 months approximately. Yes, just we have. adding adding dealerships, growing, um, moving into a larger space within the Virginia area. And I know that that's, that's a typical thing in automotive right now. We've got a yeah. lot of consolidation, dealer groups are growing. Um, wanted to kind of hear like, what have been some of the, the, both the wins and challenges as you've experienced that growth and had to go through that process? Yeah, so I think our company, when we just looked at some numbers, you know, we went up about 35% in associates, in rooftops, in total sales, even more exponential than that number. And um, just this year. Just in the last wow. 12 months. <laughs> so November 4th of last year, when we added five rooftops and then three more a couple months ago. And then we've got an open point that we're working on now. So certainly we know all the challenges. The challenges are how do you, how do you onboard a team? How do you uh, help everybody become a part of the CMA family and, and understand who they are, who we are? But there's also, I think the biggest challenge is understanding from a consolidation point, what makes sense to scale and where do we make sure that we are inspiring creativity and freedom and entrepreneurial spirit that mm. has made our industry so great for so long. Um, when I think about the most important thing that happens in these acquisitions, because I think there are a lot of people watching who have gone through the same things that we've gone through and probably will in the next mm -hmm. couple years, it's easy to write a playbook. And you know, as we've bought stores on averaging at least one or two a year for the last 10 years, you start creating a playbook and you have checklists and you get through all the things that have to happen to make the deal get closed, right? And then it's easy to just go put all your processes and sometimes your people in place and just start running. Mm -hmm. The most important part of the acquisition, uh, I think journey that we've learned is you gotta take time to listen and observe and get to know the new team because the, the most, uh, I think the strongest acquisition is when we're learning from them, they're learning from us, mm. and we're taking the best of both organizations and combining them to be better together. So yeah. have a playbook, but don't <laughs> make it just all process driven when you go into a new store. I would bet that most of the best practices that you absorb, right, or you inherit, or you know, that come with the people and the relationships and the processes, most of those things would never even be visible on the way into the deal. Without question. We typically don't learn about them until after we've closed. And then people will start asking us questions. I'm like, well, wait, why, like why, a piece of why, in your why do you do it that way? 
or wait a second, did you think about this? And if you don't take time to listen, it's easy to run past the way they've always done it because they're scared and they'll just start doing it our way. Right. And we would, we would lose the opportunity to learn. I, I have a question. I didn't prep you with this. I apologize. But you didn't prep I, me with any of this. With I don't know what you're talking about. Like, wait a minute. But, but I don't, don't I pretend actually, I do. This, this, this is scary for me because I don't know the answer to this question. <laughs> I know that one of the things that you're, that the whole organization does is you, uh, as you look forward into the next year, you kind of pick a word, right? That that is encouraging you, that you can encourage others with, and it's it's not just like your word is everyone's word. Everyone right. in the organization kind of picks a guiding principle for the next year. Right. Have you done the work to do that this year so far? And if you don't mind, kind of share that with us word. and how that's helping you lead your organization. So every, every year we pick one word for the organization and then everybody picks their individual word. Yeah. And for 2022, we have not announced this to CMA. So whoever's watching from our organization <laughs> will we'll have a more formal discussion about it. This is live stream. Yes. So our, our company word for 2023 is care. Mm. And that ties in with our vision of, of having an uncommon level of care, which the three of us have, have talked about at length. And, and how do we make the franchise system critically important to the future of selling and servicing vehicles and that customer experience journey? And we think it's through an uncommon level of care in everything that we do for our associates, our customers, our community. And so um, then my own personal word uh, is depth for 2023. And I think over the last couple of years, we've tried to do so much. Mm. And sometimes I feel that I'm not, I'm not taking the time to go deeper into our vendor relationships, into our associate experience, into my relationships with our general managers. And so I'm very focused on 2023, making sure that I'm simplifying the number of things I'm working on and taking a deeper dive, deeper relationships, deeper connection uh, with those things that are most important for our company. Well, care and depth, Liza, thank you so much for just yeah. being open-handed with, with, um, with your head and your heart to the industry. Um, couldn't, couldn't help but I'd love to spend a few minutes with you in this setting, which is new for all of us. So thank <laughs> so you so much for be being here. here today. Thanks, guys. I know, I know. Thank you. Know. I know, it's yeah. like this. For more amazing right. guests and fun, right. live from Nashville at the Asodu year-end extravaganza. Yeah. She's, she's whiteboarding. What? She's whiteboarding time for us. Yeah. If you need. What does Orbi do? Orbi centralizes all of the dealership's data into a customer data platform. Anywhere a shopper interacts with your dealership online, Orbi is there. From your website, CRM, service scheduler, trade-in tool, and more. So what can a dealership do with a customer data platform? You'll know exactly where a shopper is in their life cycle journey, from trading in, buying, or servicing a vehicle. You can group shoppers into marketing segments based on their online activity. You'll be able to automate your marketing and advertising based on those journeys and segments. This all allows you to lower your overall marketing spend and increase your return on ad spend. Orbi, data everything. Did you know that franchise dealer profit sentiment in quarter three of 2022 was down by eight points year over year, showing the need for new sources of profit to keep numbers up as interest rates rise? This data point was brought to you by Recover, the wireless GPS theft recovery and lot management system that increases PVR and gets stolen cars back fast. From all of us at Cherokee Media Group, Used Car Week and Auto Remarketing, Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. There's no better business to be in. Appreciate each one of you. Have an awesome holiday. Merry Christmas to all my friends in the auto industry. I hope everybody has an amazing holiday season and I wish everybody the absolute best in 2023. Happy New Year. Hi, this is David Meltzer, and I want to wish the Automotive State of the Union a very happy holidays. May you be kind to your future self. Do good deeds this holiday season. You'll make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. So on behalf of Josh here uh, and Team West Her and Streamline, we want to wish everybody a very happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. Welcome.
welcome back. Uh, gosh, it was a ton of fun hanging out with Liza, and gosh, she is just always just full of insight. The the care and the depth thing that got me. I'm like, I'm writing it down. I'm like, maybe I'll take those words this year. Right? I realized another thing. We never have seven minute conversations. Ever. <laughs> that was real fast. That was real like fast. I, just I, was said like, hello. I got more questions. Yeah. <laughs> I, I picked my name for the word. I was like, oh, uh, Michael. That's my word for 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's got his own word. Well, you got some more words for us. Who's, who's up next? Let's do it. Our next guest is the co-founder and CEO of Orbi, a digital marketing analytics, data, and automation solutions company in the automotive industry. With a wealth of SaaS technology experience and a knack for identifying opportunities to help dealerships grow, please welcome Atul Patel. Atul, how are you doing? Wherever you are, um, are, you, are you in Whistler? Is that, do I have that right? Yeah. I'm in Whistler, yeah. It's freezing, so it's all over the news right now, but yeah. What, what, is, what is the temperature? I'm still this far. It is negative two this morning when I dropped the kids off at their <laughs> snowboarding lessons. Oh my gosh, that's a commitment. <laughs> negative what's, two in what's snowboarding. Real commitment, no, it's, it's, what's real commitment bad. is that everybody else is snowboarding and he's hanging out with us, so yeah, I just want to start by <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on the live stream. That's a big deal. Yeah, it is. <laughs> So um, yeah, I'm I, glad to be here. I'm I, definitely going to hit the slopes after. Absolutely. I keep waiting for a bear can, to come walking up behind you. Are you spending the holidays in Whistler? Or is this something you do all the time? <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of our yearly trip as a family. We go to various places. Um, obviously, traveling for Marriott helps. So uh, I kind of use the points <laughs> towards this. But I've been doing this every year. COVID, we took a break. But it's been great. The kids have been sporting ever since they're young. And uh, I'd say it's my seventh year. Seventh. Wow. That's awesome. Uh, All right. So so let's get into it because I want to talk a little bit about what's happening uh, within the automotive industry, specifically at Orbi. Um, you know, the, the, the talk around the industry is all about CDPs, marketing automation, uh, everything that you could imagine that, that kind of I, I think Orbi is kind of positioned within. What are some of the biggest changes that you guys are seeing and looking at um, in, in, in the industry that have happened over the last year and, and how kind of your changes are comparing to what's happening actually in auto and matching up? Yeah, so I, if I were to review uh, this year and uh, we're, we're all going out with the bang, I'd say there was a lot of opportunities for dealers to try so many different things. Uh, whether it was marketing related or buying leads or how their websites operated and new tools. We probably saw dozens and dozens of tools get launched in this year. Uh, and so we were able to kind of fit within that uh, sort of ecosystem. We've been playing the long game for a while now. You know, this is our sixth year in operation at Orbi. We've transitioned over the time with different products and, and solutions. And so as you see the market talk about different acronyms, you know, CDP and so forth. And you don't even want me to add another 10 that I have just waiting to, to <laughs> unleash on this no. industry. But no, we don't. They said, and, and, uh, and, but you know what? The, the, the interesting thing we see is that we're in this pivot now where the industry dynamics changing. Uh, the industry has leaders like you guys coming out, really pushing everyone to work together, talk together, et cetera. And that's going to drive more integration. So I'd say 2023 was the year of launch for lots of ideas, lots of companies, lots of widgets, lots of tools. And 2023 is going to lead us into a lot of integration. So CDP is just one of the pieces. I'd even challenge all of us to look like, it kind of think of us as a collective CDP, the whole industry, because customer data is everywhere. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So, yeah. can you, so that, that were my thoughts. No, that's good. Can you, can you think of another industry or another time in history when there's been a similar transition like the one we're in now? <clears throat> yeah, I'd say, you know, uh, in this downturn, you know, we all hear about downturn. We're very optimistic as an industry, and I, I want to be as well. But we know interest rates don't help, uh, you know, supply chain doesn't help, and so on. But the mortgage industry kind of faced some of the same challenges. I actually 
started my career at Countrywide Financial, which is uh, what some movies are, are uh, about. And I had sold <laughs> mortgage lead management software into brokers and credit unions. So I worked at the big business, went to the small guys, empowered them. And this was call center software. They'd be calling leads within seconds. I mean, the lead was filled out on the form and consumers would be like, you know, that's interesting. I just filled out the form 30 seconds ago. And what happened though, is we all know the mortgage crash of 2009 timeframe. And so you saw a lot of tightening up what leads I would buy, the tools I would use and so on. And so several of my other startups related to that. And that's why I feel like in automotive, <clears throat> I'm, I'm able to be part of this growth before this moment of time where it's going to pivot and after. So I'm looking forward to sort of helping the industry, helping all the players uh, transition from this period of excess to this period of efficiency. So really excited about that. What do you think are kind of like the biggest challenges to, you said it's kind of going to be the year of integration <clears throat> and, um, you know, there's, there is a transition point to a, uh, this, uh, a period of efficiency. What are going to be some of the challenges that we're going to run into as an industry that dealers and industry partners should be looking out for? Yeah, I think, uh, dealers are definitely going to feel a lot more empowered, a lot more demanding of what all of the tools and services they use do for them. Uh, so I think it's going to be up to the vendor ecosystem to really start plugging in and making sure you integrate. Because if you don't, that's going to really be, a, it's going to create alienation for certain companies, right? So I'm actually really optimistic. I've been seeing more and more openness to integrate. There's standards, there's better conversations, and most importantly, dealers, both large groups and small single points are starting to kind of explore more to kind of think about it be outside of the box, kind of be troublemakers in their own right, so to speak. And so, uh, you know, obviously you guys sort of led the charge on that. So I think that's what's going to happen is dealer bodies are going to start demanding change and they're going to start teeing people up. I mean, I get text messages with leaders from many other vendors from our dealer group investors and clients. And it's sort of like, hey, can you guys chat? to integrate and it'll sometimes be <clears throat> two CEOs talking, but it's amazing how we're able to now enable our teams to collaborate better. So challenge is if you're not integrating, you should question your existence as a vendor. And if dealers, if you're <laughs> looking at your e ecosystem of partners, you don't have to live in the world that this system does one thing and doesn't talk to this other system. And really, you know, you guys have been big, uh, uh, you know, uh, so you've been focused on the customer experience a lot. Think, how many times do you want to, if at this hotel I'm in, I'm at the Westin Whistler, imagine if I booked my reservation in one place, got to the front desk and gave my entire information again uh, from scratch. Yeah. And then took my keys, uh, my kids to ski school or snowboard school, and they didn't know who I was. And I was filling out a form again. That would be difficult. But yet in our industry, that's what consumers are still doing. So yeah. I think we have a great opportunity to really plug it all in and change how consumers do it uh, online. <clears throat> well, I think that's a big challenge to the industry. Atul, <clears throat> thanks for joining us, even from your family vacation in Whistler. It's been a pleasure having you uh, and just having this conversation over looking back and, and what's next. Uh, we can't wait to, to see you in person again. Well, hey, <clears throat> we got the opportunity to hang out well, with uh, <clears throat> some people on Broadway in downtown Nashville. We wanted to ask them a few questions that are just on our mind uh, as the automotive industry is moving forward and facing challenges and and really uh, wondering what the consumer is thinking. We promise we didn't prompt anyone. We didn't tell them the questions we were asked. We met these people. Uh, we're going to have a few interviews throughout the show, uh, but check out this first one. First question, where's the last place that you bought a car? Uh, Random Lake, Wisconsin. Random Lake, Wisconsin, OK. Was it at a dealership or with like, sort of individual? It was at a Hyundai dealership, yep. All right, so what was your favorite part about that buying process or purchasing process? 
we were kind of like on the fence and so the guy selling us the car like threw in a Bucks jersey at the end like to you know cherry on top I was like oh hell yeah okay so dream world if it was better how would the process the purchase process all that what what would have like set everything on I would I would fly back there to buy a car no matter what I mean, the salesman didn't do the best job. I was into the car before he even said a word, so I probably would have done a better job myself driving down the bargain, you know what I mean? Because I paid full price for that thing. I didn't give a shit. All right, so crazy world out there. They've, they're putting batteries in cars these days. I don't know if you've heard or not. Have you thought about ever buying an EV or, or a battery-driven car? Ideally, ideally, I would like to, yes, yes. I would like to contribute to less emissions for sure and like, yeah, definitely. I would. I would like to. It's just getting the money for it. <laughs> <laughs> they're pricey. They're pricey. <laughs> Woo, Michael. Hey. Tell us who's next. When the news said that the next few years would be a rough go for car dealers, our next guest said, "Hold my pickle costume." After a successful 20-year run as the president of NAMAD, he is now the owner of Nissan of Bowie. Now, please welcome the man who can get you out of any pickle, Damon Lester. You did it, brother. <laughs> oh, yeah. First up. First up. Oh, here we go. You got me all messed up. It's going to be in my head all day for the rest of the day. <laughs> At least somebody got it. That's when you do stuff like that. You're like, somebody's going to really get this. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's in there. Now, you were a little upset because you didn't realize we were dressing up. But the thing is, you wear a suit every day. Th that's this, true. This is holiday attire. We don't yeah. get the seat. Damon does look good. You been working out? A little bit. A little bit? A little bit? I'm trying to... Yeah, <laughs> tell you to bulk up. <laughs> Gotta hide it, hide it until the summertime comes. Then it's yeah, it's go time. All right, so uh, it's been a really big year. But first, I want to ask you: Do you have any like holiday traditions that you look forward to every year? You know what? Just past two years, we've been kind of absent from our families, and so just really enjoying just being together. It's kind of like the reinvention of everything. Just to to see family once again is and it's going to be good without mask. Yeah, you know, this is the first full year without mask. What's the thing that you've missed the most that you think you're going to get back into? You like, know what? That first season, like Liza, the first thing in the morning, you get up early, like the man that's going to be there, and there's some stuff out there, and, yep. and just like, oh no. Did you ask for anything there. specific? You know what? No. What do you get the I man got, that has got, everything. What do you I get got, the man that has I'm just, everything? I'm just happy. <laughs> just blessed. I'm a blessed person, so I, I try to give. We'll take that. Yeah. It's, it's been a big year and a big year of transition for you. Yeah. Um, stepping down as the president of NAMAD and passing the torch to Hugh Gene. Yeah. And then, um, you know, assuming your role as chairman of the board. Vice chair. Vice chair. I'm Not sorry. Not yet. Oh, yeah. Not, Not yet. yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't, you didn't Coming hear, soon. No one yeah. heard that. <laughs> right. Um, but then, really, you have the opportunity to now to, to be a full-time operator in the store every day. Um, what's that transition been like for you? It's been tough and good at the same time because now before last year i was doing two jobs i was doing namad and and, and also yeah, the were. store and now just being able to focus on the store is really bringing um i'll use the word that we used last this this past week with our with our staff was just gratitude mm -hmm. right just being thankful that that we we can say thank you to customers or saying and, and showing gratitude to our to our staff is is really key i mean they've been holding it down for us for the past year and a half since we purchased the store and um, we're still leading the way, and we have a lot more goals to, to achieve for, for, for this upcoming year. You, you are somebody who has always really embodied the mentality of bringing along the next generation, investing in them, finding other people willing to invest in them. Uh, tell, tell me, like, what, what is going on in that world? Because I know you do some work there in the NAMAD world, and you also invest in a lot of young talent in your own store. So what are you excited about? You know, we, we are trying to build a bench of successful people who – never had an opportunity to think that they could be successful. Um, and, and so with that, you know, you have the, the academies, you have a lot of training mm -hmm. mechanisms, but if you don't paint a picture of what someone can be, then we try to paint that picture for you, for them, and show them that they can achieve whatever goal that they set. And so next year and in, in, in the years to come, we're really trying to build people to show the possibility of ownership. And that may be partnerships, it may be sole proprietorships, there may be a, a whole bunch of different varieties of it, but we want to show that there, it, it is possible. What is that, where does that 
aspiration typically start? Do you, do you start that when someone's a salesperson, a manager, or do you, does it just depend on the drive you notice in the person? I think it just all depends on drive. It doesn't matter which, which department I think that you come from. It's just you have to have a will and a drive to want to do something better or see something better in you. And, and it's our responsibility to try to pull that out. Mm -hmm. There's a couple people at our store that I've kind of put, in, put, put a lot of into to show that they have, the, they have talent, they just never knew that they had it. And mm -hmm. so I think that's one of the benefits that car dealers across the country provide is that opportunity for, for their people. So, um, you know, we were just, when Liza was up here, we were talking about the growing number of dealer groups that are, you know, moving toward acquisition to get, you know, efficiency of scale and leverage and size. You're someone who said, like, we'll get there, but you got to start with one, right? With and one. there are a lot of challenges that come with starting with one. But what would you say to the single point stores? that are heading into 2023 in an environment where you start to see people consolidating all around you. Uh, what's your perspective going on? I, I try to, for, for us as being single point, I try to maximize the most out of our store that we can do. Mm -hmm. There's always been improve, improvement. There's always ways to improve from efficiencies, from, from technology and using uh, companies like Orbi, Cars.com um, and AccuTrade. We're trying to make sure we're being efficient as, as possible and trying to grow from a volume standpoint because volume is the game. Mm -hmm. Glenn, Glenn Lunda uses volume moves, volume solves everything and that's the truth in, in this environment going into next year. And so we wanna maximize the way that we do volume and moving new cars, we wanna maximize, maximize the volume, the way that we do used cars as well as definitely taking care of the service to customer. And so that's what we wanna yeah, do. Yeah, let's talk about service. We haven't talked about service on the show at all yet. What are your service goals in 2023? What are you focusing on? Oh, efficiency. All day. One time in, one time out. <laughs> Start there, right? <laughs> Start there. Yeah. Start there. Um, yeah. All right, let's shift the conversation for a second. Let's just, we have about a minute left. Um, Eugene recently took the reins of yeah. NAMAD, right? You let your baby go, right? You were there for a long time. How's he doing? Eugene's doing well. For 60 days in, um, he's doing extremely non -automotive well. Non-automotive background. Non-automotive background, and... Um, He's, he's reinventing himself from being the accountant to now being a CEO. And, and that transition You went through that hard. transition yourself. I went through the same right? thing. And that's the kind of the words of wisdom that I gave him. It's like, now you have to think like a CEO versus, versus a, a, an accountant or, or an auditor. So. so what opportunity do you see for him this next year? I mean, aside from personal growth, like where do you think he's going to put the pedal down? He's going to show the value of being a leader at the millennial age leading a group of people who are significant older yeah and trying to bridge that gap of of this it's not a us versus them mm -hmm. and he's going to be able to bring that that gap and ma marry the two very well yeah i think that the investment you're making in the next generation so focused like even Eugene stepping in you you finding someone that represents like he does right by stepping in your store and doing that and the encouragement i just think it's something that the industry needs more of in a time where I think a bleak picture can get painted like, hey, there's no room for the next generation yeah. when really there's a lot of hope and future for a different industry, but a good one. Yeah, the, the industry is reinventing itself. We have to also reinvent ourselves as well. That's right. Um, I'm reinventing myself from, from being a, a, a president of the association to now being a dealer principal. And so that's all part of growth. And so that's, that's the goal. And I think we all need to have goals to, to, try, to, to try to strive for. Well, Damon Lester, Thank you so much for making the Thank trip you, to spend man. a few minutes with us today. Um, keep wearing the sweaters. Let's go for it. Uh, I'm a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. We'll be enjoying our guests live from Nashville at the Asodu Year End Extravaganza after this break. Greetings, the SOTU family and friends. On behalf of your NAMAD family, we wish you a happy holidays and happy new year. See you in 2023. Merry Christmas, Automotive! Hi, Alyssa Calvaruso here with Digital Dealer. On behalf of our entire team, we want to wish you and your family a very happy and safe holidays. Matt Raymond from Team Auto Group here, and I just wanted to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. Hi, this is Ashley Cavazos from Walden Automotive Group. I'm here with Paige and our week three sales new hires, and we just wanted to wish you happy holidays! Good morning, Paul in the auto industry. I wanna wish you all a happy holiday and a happy and prosperous new year. It's gonna be a great 2023. Have a great day.
According to a recent survey, 53% of those intending to buy a car are either somewhat or very concerned about auto theft. This data point was brought to you by Recover, the wireless GPS theft recovery and lot management system that increases PVR and gets stolen cars back. <laughs> back in Cirillo, guess what I got next to me? Check this out, look at this, look at this. Ooh. Under our non-Christmas tree, it's our couch tree. <laughs> We've got, we got a little, it's our a couch tree. tree. A tree. <laughs> we got an iPad. I got an iPad and uh, I don't, I don't, you know, we don't do iPads in our house because my kids are too young for them. So we're gonna give this one away, how about that? I love it. So we, we're, we're giving away two things today. We got an iPad, we got something later. If you registered for the live stream, you were eligible. We just did a drawing off stage, and I wanna say congrats. Well, first of all, I wanna thank A to Z Sync for supporting us, helping us out, getting this giveaway. Uh, a to Z Sync is a great partner of the Asodu family. Congratulations to Jennifer McCumber, GM at Bayway CD hey CDJR. Congrats on getting the iPad. It's even a new iPad. It's a, we, yeah, we got them a new one. How about them apples? <laughs> it's not one of the ones you won't let your kids touch. It's got gravy fingers yeah, on it. Yeah, I know. Yeah it, yeah, it could have been my kid's iPad that they don't have, but, you know, we went with a new one. Yeah. We're fancy like Love that. Love it. Speaking of fancy, let's throw them another guest. Hey, coming up is the Senior Director of New Car Solutions at Cox Automotive and is responsible for V-Auto, Cox Automotive's new car strategy, including Viato's Conquest Inventory Management Solutions and their Rates and Incentives business. He also has, dare I say, one of the coolest last names I've heard in a while. Please welcome Brian Finkelmeyer. Nothing so, rhymes with Finkelmeyer. So Brian, Brian came a whole <laughs> really, really long way to, to see us here, all the way from 30 minutes south of here. <laughs> Brian, thanks for Maybe joining us. Maybe closer to 20. Okay. Is it really 20? So coming back. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. You yeah. and I met uh, a few years back when I was still in the dealership world at Nelson Mazda. Actually, my old boss is sitting right through there. So we're going to, yeah. So thanks, Chad, for coming, first of all. Uh, but Brian and I met. Because uh, because he it, it was was just like thrilled about everything that that was going on in Conquest. I think we had like a mutual friend, and and we really got heady in, in, into the numbers. So we'll do that in a second too, yeah. just a second, because obviously Cox Automotive has a lot of that. But just kind of wanted to to see like what are you doing around the holidays? What's what's your vibe uh, this next week? Boy, I tell you, you know, it's the best week of the year in the car business because everything calms down, you know, except for the, in the retail world where I know uh, traditionally it's always been December to remember and the showrooms have been busy. And so I think this year is going to be interesting because we don't have as many deals. We don't have as many cars as we've had historically, um, but I'm, I'm certain that there'll be plenty of uh, Americans driving home in a new car before the calendar year is over. Yeah, I think it's going to be a busy week. And, and we were talking about this before, you know, the 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 changes just in incentives in the last year have really changed you know a dealer's ability to incentivize purchase or even the OEMs you know need to incentivize purchase yeah. i know we we're talking about a little bit of data maybe you can share about just the change in incentives and what customers are have access to from an incentive perspective to to purchase a new vehicle well, yeah, so I mean, this has been such an unbelievable set of circumstances that's really transpired since the pandemic as new car average transaction prices just continue to climb. Last month, in fact, Cox Automotive reported over $48,000 was the average price of a new car. We used to think of that as a luxury car. Today, that's just an average new vehicle. And so while new car prices have skyrocketed, incentives have absolutely plummeted. In fact, year over year, incentive spending is down from about $1,800 a car to $1,100 a car. So car companies have really uh, lived a great lifestyle here over the last couple of years of having incredible margins because they're spending so much less money on incentives as new car customers are lined up and taking pre-orders and there's just uh, been an imbalance between supply and demand that I think both dealers and OEMs have really benefited from. Yeah, so the dealers and the OEMs benefiting and then we're seeing that starting to impact um, what the consumer is having from a buying. You were sharing with me a little bit about just kind of what what happens from a payments perspective yeah. because of that. And 
just some shocking stuff even on the used car side, right? Yeah, it's just unbelievable. So before the pandemic, the average new car price is about $525 a month, or I should say the average monthly payment. Today, that sits around seven sixty, dollars which is another just kind of mind-blowing stat. <laughs> and so this year, the average used car payment is around $560 a month. So what I thought was just sort of striking was to say that in 2022, your average new car payment is actually, I should say your average used car payment <laughs> is higher than what a new car payment was back before the pandemic. So Smart. just amazing to see the uh, incredible escalation of pricing that consumers have faced here over the past couple of years. Yeah, so we're starting to see, and, and one of the things that I know you guys have a lot of data on is just the increased inventory, especially with a few manufacturers, that we're starting to see some ground stock. You know, there's a lot of yeah. like, Toyota dealers that are like, what ground stock, right? But there's a lot of CDJR, Stellantis type, you know, GM dealerships that are starting to see ground stock. How is that impacting the behavior of both the dealer and the OEM that, that you're seeing? Yeah, so I, I, I just wrote an article to say, who's gonna blink first in 2023? And it's this question about, are consumers gonna continue paying 760 a month? Are dealers gonna begin coming off of their grosses? Are OEMs gonna begin adding incentives? And I think we're beginning to see uh, some OEMs and dealers beginning to blink a little bit, as you mm. say, with certain brands. I think, um, you know, uh, Jack Hollis, this, the head of Toyota sales reported they run about a four day supply, but other brands, and you can even see it visually as we're driving down Auto Row, uh, certain brands you're beginning to see uh, a sizable amount of inventory. And so what at Cox Automotive, we keep track of incentives every month and we're definitely beginning to see some uh, uptick in the incentives uh, with some of the brands that you mentioned. Yeah, so in your opinion, like who, who's, what, what shoe drops first? How, how what's, what's kind of the, is it gonna be this rolling kind of through the OEMs or are we gonna see large scale consumer changes? I know that, you know, there's a lot of economists kind of, you know, threatening on, on a deeper recession and there's yeah. different changes in interest rates, but what shoe does drop first? Well, yeah, and I think it's just such an interesting set of circumstances. It's this amazing dichotomy. On the one hand, we hear all the news that you talk about, about recession and inflationary pressures and lack of discretionary spending. And meanwhile, we're seeing record uh, all-time highs in terms of monthly payments. So it's a question of like, how much longer can this keep going? And I think in my mind, um, it, it certainly seems as though that the American consumer in 2023 is going to begin looking to spend less money. In fact, uh, one interesting fact was that Walmart reported recently a big uptick in their grocery business driven by more affluent customers beginning to buy their groceries from Walmart. So I think that that's maybe an indicator that the days of $760 a month payments maybe are not for long. But I, I anticipate that not a drastic change, but I think certainly it feels like we're towards the top of the, the peak. Yeah, so, you know, looking forward into 2023 when we, you know, which like, you know, we, we, we think back to the pandemic and like that was crazy. And now we're like, everything's really crazy because we don't know what's going to happen. But as you're seeing this and as you're talking to, you know, dealers and you speak with a lot of larger dealer groups in kind of the preparation with inventory and pricing, what, how, do, how do you get ahead of some of that stuff and, and make sure that, that you're hedged against any sort of changes and, and still pressing into consumer demand? Yes, yeah, so I think the big risk for dealers really is on the used car side and the valuations. And you're touching on all this money that was paid. And in fact, CarMax reported in their recent earnings uh, a big headwinds around uh, the valuation of their inventory. I know Carvana's got challenges with that. And so I think that's going to be the big question is at what point do some of these big uh, used car retailers and even the publics begin to uh, sort of rationalize what they paid for those used cars when they acquired them in the summer versus what some of those cars are worth today. We're seeing at uh, Mannheim Auto Auctions almost a point of depreciation almost on a weekly basis on the used car side. Wow. So certainly we're beginning to see a steady uh, slowdown in terms of used car valuations. I think that's where there's a lot more risk to the dealer than on their new car side of the business. I think on yeah. the new car side, we're gonna definitely see continued improvement on the production and availability as the year goes on. And I think the big question is to say, how much longer can consumers keep buying $65,000 SUVs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Well, I trust that you'll keep us up to date and really appreciate you bringing all that data. And I think it'll serve dealers well as they're preparing for 2023. So, Brian, Great. thanks for joining us. Great. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Great to you, buddy. We'll be right back with more Asodu year end extravaganza live from Nashville featuring Paul J. Daly and Tom Alcier. quality conversation is the ideal gateway to a sale. When you partner with Active Engage, you're adding an entire team of dealership-oriented specialists whose only goal is to ensure your success. 
From the first impression to the final sale, Active Engage is there working alongside our dealers to make sure that shoppers have a phenomenal experience. We are inspired by the tenacity of dealers today, and that is the motivation that drives us to achieve industry-leading results in everything that we do. Projected EV adoption by 2030 is accelerating. In 2018, Boston Consulting Group projected that EVs would make up 20% of the market by 2023. However, in 2022, that projection jumped to 53%. This data point was brought to you by Recover, the wireless GPS theft recovery and lot management system that increases PVR and gets stolen cars back fast. Come on, Scott, get in on it. All right, boys, as we rehearse, take it away, Nick. <clears throat> From all of us to all our valued dealer customers and partners, happy, happy, happy holidays, holidays from, from Recover. Recover. Michael, we're hey. back. You know, uh, got... <laughs> he, he won't admit it, but we were talking off camera, and he, he admitted to me our Ooh. next guest. Oh, okay. The key to a slimming physique is wearing all black. That's what he said. He's the general manager and managing partner at Valley Chrysler, Dodge, Honda, Jeep, Nissan, Ram. So what are we doing? We're just listing OEMs at this things. point. Yeah, just keep going. I <laughs> thought we were playing a game for him. I don't know. Where he's, he's got all the things. I think VW's in there. Please welcome Scott Simon. I mean, I had to get all dressed up for you, brother. He looks so good. See, you like that power. I love it. I they, love just, it. they just do your touch. Man, you, you do always look good. Well, I tried. I, you know, I wanted to dress up. You know, I was going to be on stage around y'all, too. I just need a beard and a black hat, you know? We, had, so we can do the black hat. I, can, I don't know if I can help you with you a beard. You sweat too much for a beard and a black hat. <laughs> True. Yeah, right. True. You play too much racquetball. No, I think I have too much hair. I think. Y'all yeah. had be oh, I I'll got see myself. it, I Ooh. got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Well, Scott, um, you have, well, first let me ask you, I like the holiday tradition question. Yeah. I'm going to keep asking it. Um, you have kids, you guys all kind of run in a lot of different directions, have a lot of things going on in your life. You invest in tons of companies. Do you have some holiday traditions that allow you to slow down for even like Christmas morning? Well, I'm a little, I'm a little nervous about this Christmas. I really am. I just did the math. I've got... <laughs> 20, I don't 20, know what's coming, but I no, know No, I've got thing. 20 family members coming, but that, that would make all of y'all nervous, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can't get two or three of them to get along. I got 20 family members. I got five dogs, a lizard, and a cat. Something all going to be book. in my, all going to be in my house the 24th and 25th. So hopefully there's a house. All the dogs and the cat and the lizard all inside. Yes. And please don't put my cat socks on there. My, my wife played a trick <laughs> on me, laid these out for me today and. I'm a cat dad, so so I'm you know please don't put those on camera. So you have but, 20 uh, people coming over, and the dogs and the cat and the lizard. What are y'all gonna do when you're? I all... hope to survive. Yeah. And then I'm going to work on the 26th. You're gonna pull a call out Griswold. You're gonna go out and hang Christmas lights yeah, on the house. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm sure there'll be some alcohol drink, and uh, we'll just not try to kill each other. And uh, I'll be going back to work on the 26th for the 13th month. At but no, I'm, I'm excited about right. having everybody there. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So um, one really unique thing, and, and you've been featured in Automotive News this year for this very reason, is that. Um, you have a, a pretty unique mentoring program mm -hmm. in your dealership, and it doesn't matter what what position you hold, if you're new, if you're seasoned, if um, you know what department you're in. Yeah. Kind of when you step into this mentorship program that you have, everyone kind of is on a level playing field. Can you Correct. tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So you know, years ago, a lot of the auto industry deals with turnover. So I said, what can we do to combat this? And you know, you can get a job anywhere selling cars. Jesus. I said, but 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 how do we how do we offer something that no one else offers? And then what you find when you talk to your team, earlier in my career, I was, I was worried about what my goals were. And what I found myself was way overweight, um, just not a happy person. I was winning in business, but I was losing as a husband, as a dad. And I said, look, I've got to make a change. So then it, it, it dawned on me, wait a minute, I've got to have a vision. And then the people that work with me have to have their own goals. So a light flipped on and said, look, it's not what's important to me, it's what's important to them. So we have a vision at CMA. 
obviously, uh, my partner and our fearless leader, Liza, has a vision about moving lives forward. Mm -hmm. So then I said, hey, I'm going to do a mentorship. It's, it's free. It's Mondays at noon during lunch. You sign up. And at first, I just let anybody sign up. And I learned lessons about that. You've got to have, they've got to have, they got to apply now. What do you want to change in your life? And we started with. Try to vet it a little bit. Yeah, on the because way they got to, you know, if something's just free, they don't take it. And they're part of a group too, right? You have Correct. to make sure the group is moving forward together. Well, first they got to know we care. Yep. If they, if they think that we don't care about them, they're not going to be vulnerable enough to participate in this. Because when we go in there, there's no HR, there's no titles. We go into a room and I'm not the boss. I'm not the leader. We're all level playing field. And we do uh, health, we do wealth, and we do relationships. That's what we focus on. And we ask you for your three personal and three professional goals. First, your personal goals. What are your goals? And then what's your professional goals? And we gain a lot of insight into people. Oh, yeah. We uh, do a game where you guess your credit score. So you have to write it down. And then when you come back in, you go to free credit report. One person with his, was within two points. One person was 250 points off to the good. Oh, it was better than they thought. It was thought. better. So this young salesperson, his parents put him as an authorized user on a credit card, which he is was a doing hat. great. And he's like, I got a 750 credit score. So yeah, we need to sell you a car. Well, let me ask you this. So. Um, um, <laughs> what is the most, the, the story that comes to the top of the mind? We have a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest transformation in 2022 through that program. We have a gentleman that relocated his family. Um, he was a parts and service director. And for us, he's a service manager. So he went back in position, relocated his family and, uh, because he wanted to be mentored. He contacted me and said, would I mentor him privately? And I said, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I only mentor my team because that's all I have time to do, running five car dealerships and other things I'm, I'm involved in. And the lizard. And the lizard. The cat, I mean, I keep the cat away from the lizard <laughs> and the dogs away from the cat and the cat's got his claws. It's a mess. This, <laughs> Christmas is going to be a lot of fun. But you Please know, record he, this. Yes, I will. I will. <laughs> and, and I said, okay, what do you want to accomplish? And he said, I, I'm not happy who I am. I've, got, I've gained a bunch of weight. I'm not present at home. So he relocated his family. He went through the program. He's lost 45 pounds. He doesn't look like the same person. He doesn't walk like the same person. He doesn't talk like the same person. His wife sent me a message and said, thank you. Wow. Thank you. So if you pour into others, what other business, heck with the auto industry, would give up their time to mentor their people to make a difference in their life? And now what happens is we have people that are relocating all over the country to want to come work for CMA. I believe it. It's, you know, a, it's our people. We, we have the shirts that say love people more than you love cars. It's a phrase that, that Liza came up with. We just put it on a shirt and we try to like dish the credit back as much as we can because people are like, I love that shirt. But that really is the case. And you know, Liza shared that the word for CMA is care. What is your personal word? My, my personal word is grit. Grit. I think this year we're going to have to show grit like no other. I think 23 is going to be a fantastic year, mm -hmm. but I think we're going to have to work harder than we've worked previously. But the ones with grit are going to win, and we're going to win big. And our company has grit. Well, Scott, thank you so much for spending thank some you. time with us today. Yeah, thank I can't you for wait to see the me. transformations in 2023. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate you. Yeah, love it. Yeah. We're going this way. Yeah. No, you don't know what we're doing. This is that moment that I told you all about. That if we didn't know what we were doing, we we're just going to wing it. I believe right now we are going to Brian Kramer for some on-site appraisals, literally. He says appraise everything and we're gonna hold him to it. So here we go. Okay, so today I'm here in Nashville with Chris. We're going to take a look at his vehicle and we're gonna use the AccuTrade product in order to appraise it. And hopefully we're gonna buy it from you right now with an instant offer. So we're gonna walk on over. Historically, it required a lot more uh, steps in order to appraise a vehicle. So using the AccuTrade tool, here's a, really all it's going to require and all it's going to take. So I just log into the app. I'm going to scan the barcode right here. I'm going to accept it. Then I'm going to verify what the trim level is. Looks like an S. And then I'm going to verify the miles. So he's got 69,202 miles, which we're obviously going to verify that. So I'm going to modify the mileage to 69202, which that's going to take into account that the miles are low for the year. Exterior color is black. Interior color is black as well. So as I go through, it's going to tell me what to look for under the hood, timing component, uh, 
chain stretch on the timing chain, uh, all those sorts of things. This is, doesn't mean that it, it, if there's anything wrong with Chris's vehicle. It just means that that model year, uh, just to take a second look, because the odds of it are higher than an average car. So now we're going to take a look at the tires. <clears throat> so we've got three different grades. Now these tires look like they're fairly new. So I'm just going to walk around <coughs> the entire vehicle and I'm going to look for dents, dings, that sort of thing. But it's all point and click. It's very simple. And then as I'm going back around the, the bumper, you, the selection is either bent, chip, crack, dent, scuff, overspray. So we're going to go with dent. So now it comes down to me going back to uh, you know, historical data and my experience of, of determining what I think that's going to cost. We default everything for that. Very simple. Everything point and click. The roof had an issue, which doesn't. Anything like that, it's all point and click. <clears throat> now here's the, the trickiest part, is the mechanical. So most typically dealers get risk averse, because they want to be conservative, because who knows what's going on under the hood when I run it through the shop or the suspension, all the other things that, that come along with it. So for that reason, we've got an OB OBD2 scanning device. When I plug it in, it's basically a risk, risk mitigation device, and that's about how long it takes. <clears throat> that's integrating into the appraisal right now to figure out internally what's going on with the transmission, engine, drivetrain, everything mechanical. Next step we're going to do is we're going to get the exterior photo images just in the event that Chris doesn't want to do it today. I can go back and reference it down the road. So now I've got the finished condition report. It's giving me the data. It's saying that there's a 87 market day supply, 76 local days on market. I factored everything into account, so I'm doing everything completely transparently. So now we've completed the appraisal. We took the photos, we scanned it mechanically, we checked for cosmetic reconditioning. So now it's time for the big review. I'm just going to let you look at the reaction on Chris's face. So that's the power of AccuTrade. It does it that quickly. It'll tell you the condition. It'll tell you the history. We've got all the reconditioning as well as all of the photos located right here for future reference. So that's as simple as it is. And uh, I appreciate the, the vehicle. We need to use our inventory. Woo! Literally appraising cars anywhere, anytime, at the speed of light. Praise anywhere. It's Brian Kramer, hashtag appraise anywhere. That's fun. It is a lot of fun. Well, welcome back. And I'm so excited because we have a bunch of nervous people over here because it's time for a game. Michael, what are we playing? We are going to be playing a riveting game called First Pencil. It's a high energy retail automotive game show where two teams go head to head in a fast paced battle of drawing and guessing. In each round, one member of each team will be given a topic and 60 seconds on the clock to draw out their answer while the rest of the team tries to guess what they're drawing. The first team, I, you know how to play games, the first team to guess the drawing correctly wins the point for their team. Uh, so why don't we turn it over to you, okay. Paul. Who's on your team? All right, I hand-selected my team. Um, they're both terrified when we said we're going to have to draw something. That's because they spent so much time running dealers. But I got Damon, lightning drawing hands, Lester. And I have Liza lithograph, I'm trying to think of something. <laughs> Liza Borges, and stretching. I'm telling you what, this is the dream team right here. They don't know it yet, but well, we're gonna crush it right now because can, look can at these two. Can we make sure that Scott Simons knows you're not allowed to tackle? Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. I got I'm you. Out. I got you back. Brian, <laughs> get my spot. Yeah. All right, and Kyle, who's on your team? I got Scott the Muscle Man Simons over here, <laughs> and I got Alex, cars ain't the only thing he does better. <laughs> All right, so to get started, I have three <laughs> envelopes over here. Well, they're not really envelopes, but I have too. three cards here. We have no idea what these are. No yeah, clue. Even, the even audience will see. Nobody we will knows. not. I'm All right, so I'm going to bring you in close. Okay. You ready? Let's take oh, a look. my goodness. Number one. Here we go. Okay. Ready? So with 60 seconds on the okay. clock, let's go. Let's do it. Four square. square. Car. A house. House deal. Dealership. Uh, car lot. Uh, uh, oh, 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 dealership. Dealership. Inventory. Driveway. Inventory. Hey, there it is. Yeah. Inventory. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yes. All right. Wow. They 
saw the car. Oh, yes. They saw the car. Let's go. Okay, so first, first of all, first of, how did you get inventory? I got from the same dealership. It, it looks like a draft taking a dump. And then I just started drawing the cars, man. That's what's in this front is of the, the full inventory in West wow. Virginia right now. This is big. This is for this the is lithograph. Actually, this is the I told full you. inventory of most Toyota dealers. I told you it's going to be good. Right <laughs> all two of them. Okay. <laughs> all right. Who's next? Yeah. All right, so it's right, Day Man David. and oh, Macho boy. Man Just Randy Savage. Oh, boy. All right, you ready? Bring it in, bring it in. Oh, hold up, hold up. Let's rip this off. Come on, it's close. Okay, you ready? No. Gentlemen, you ready? <laughs> Here is your blue. Come on, man. 60 seconds on the clock. Let's do it. Here Photosynthesis. <laughs> what is it? Sun. 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 Wait, you love you ain't on it. Solar power. 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 I didn't know Scott knew ballet. No, no. What, what is that? You can't. What is it? Uh, DMS. Oh, what oh boy. Zero. Zero. There it is. Zero. Zero. There it is. Winner. Team Kyle. Oh. I tried to write hey, any P up what, here. What kind, of a, what, what kind of a sound would we play for a cheater? Oh, oh my goodness. We got cheater noises. <laughs> oh. Oh. So rigged. That was not drawing. He was like, what's chair. another three-letter word I could... What in okay. the world? I was trying to draw Just a Just write the answer next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're tied. This is a tiebreaker. No this is a tiebreaker. Here is your clue. 60 seconds on the clock, and let's go. Uh, tree, uh, uh, rocket, Tesla, SpaceX, uh, <laughs> wheel hammer, uh, garage door. Fixed up. There it is. We got a winner. Team Kyle. What is this? Two sock puppets. Puppet. This is, this is, this is a tree <laughs> and Scott's a, a cat. Wrench and a hammer. <laughs> Two socks and a hammer. Wrench. The man runs my a publicly wrench. traded company. <laughs> wrench is hard. <laughs> my wrench didn't quite look like this. This is like one of those <laughs> ancient <laughs> devices that you sling to get, you know, that's, the, the board by the way. That's Scott's <laughs> gym, actually. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's I'm nice. glad we're good at selling cars. Oh, we're good at selling cars. We're good at servicing them. That was fun. Not so much drawing. We have another round? Or the day All wins. right, so we hope you're enjoying the Asodu year-end extravaganza. Uh, oh, stay yes. tuned for more <laughs> incredible right, right, and fun right, right. after the break. That's, That's it, Team Kyle right. took it. Today's consumers shop in a variety of ways, from browsing for vehicles online to selecting F&I products in store. But regardless of how they shop or how far along the process they get, they expect a seamless experience across every touch point. Upstart Auto Retail can help you deliver the ideal omni-channel experience for every shopper. We make it easy to capture customers' behaviors as they're building deals online. Then we automatically sync that information into your CRM system, giving you full visibility into their actions so you can confidently pick up the conversation in store without repeating any steps. Close more deals and build confidence into every sale with Upstart Auto Retail. Did you know that the stolen car recovery rate in the U.S. was at 46% in 2022? Recover increases that recovery rate to over 90%. This data point was brought to you by Recover, the wireless GPS theft recovery and lot management system that increases PVR and gets stolen cars back fast. Happy holidays. 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 On behalf of everyone from the Vivian Fiesta Otter Group, we would like to send our warmest wishes to you and your families during this holiday season. Hello, everybody. This is Matt Jones from True Car. On behalf of myself and the True Car team, I'd like to wish you a happy and safe and healthy and joyous 2022 holiday season. 2022 has just been a fantastic year. Uh, thinking about all of the strides we've made in automotive, all of the conventions that we've been able to go to, we've been able to learn from people, create new connections and learn new things from some of the industry's best. So as we wrap up 2022, I'm so excited for a So2Z. 
I'm disappointed that I can't be there myself. I'd love to be in Nashville in person, just a little bit further uh, away than, I'm so far away that I just can't make it into the building this year is what I'm trying to say. But uh, to my friends and family at so too, thank you for everything that you're doing, making the industry stronger, better, and brighter. To my participants and friends in the automotive industry, can't wait to see what we do in 2023 as we kick it off bigger, better, and more informed than ever before. And uh, that's it. Look forward to the next time that we get to talk, hopefully we'll be in person. See you then. Happy New Year. I feel like we need better dance moves because the band is on point today. Oh, Thanks, are. you guys. Really appreciate it. Um, Paul, I just want to say, I want to remind you. I will remind you this at least to the end of the year. I know. I already know what's My coming. Team one already. <laughs> okay. We're going to have to go to a replay because when you write the answer on the board, it's kind of against the rules. <laughs> But we'll leave it it's there. Okay. I, I already see a rematch coming for next year. It'll be a rematch next year. Maybe we'll do another different game. That was a ton of fun. Uh, hey, we're into the second half of the show, and already. we got more guests. Who we got, Michael? Up next is the president and CEO of Cars.com, a good friend of Asodu and a steadfast advocate for the dealer body. Please welcome back Alex Vetter. <laughs> Real talk, I knew it was a wrench the whole entire time. I was trying <laughs> yeah. to give them the benefit of the doubt, so congrats. That was an amazing drawing. On the, on Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for being nice a good win. sport. Nice Thanks win. for being a good sport and helping carry the couch back onto the set, for those of you who didn't get to see yeah, that. Yeah, you missed that. <laughs> Alex. Whatever it takes. That's where, right. Where you're at in the country, this is, well, actually, I, I think you brought the cold Ooh. down here to Nashville with Ooh. you today. This is not cold. Not cold at all. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what do how the holidays look like for you up there in, in, in the upper north? Well, Chicago is our, our headquarters, which I'm sure is what you're talking about. You know, I, we don't have any big plans. But both my kids are now of age where they're playing sports, so we're going to spend most of our holiday in, in a gymnasium somewhere watching them compete, and I wouldn't <laughs> trade that for the world. Ah, oh, that's awesome. That's cool. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of people know uh, Alex Vetter of Cars.com, and Cars.com is a widely known brand both inside the automotive industry and outside the auto industry from a consumer perspective. Um, and and it it originally started as just marketplace. Like it was a marketplace for consumers to go, dealers to list inventory. But over the last few years and really starting with Dealer Inspire, you have completely transformed that company and, and really kind of taking it to, to a different type of platform altogether. Can you talk about kind of like why that's important for cars.com to have that type of breadth of, of, of partners? Well, look, I, uh, first of all, thank you for the compliment. The, the, uh, I don't like to spend too much time on the past because that's not where we're going. But, yeah. but you know, the, the short version is if our origins at Cars.com were owned by a bunch of media companies who wanted to sell advertising. And that was a great business. But when I kept looking at the auto industry in terms of the challenges that I saw local operators having to keep up with the pace of technology, I just saw a much bigger opportunity. And, and if you look at the company's evolution, what we've done, we were able to buy the company back from our former media company owners spin the company public, and then fortify a strategy that truly is enabling dealerships to operate at a fraction of the cost. I mean, if you really wanted to know the essence of what we're trying to do is enable dealerships to run their businesses with fewer people and lower overall operating cost. And so, you know, we started with our acquisition of Dealer Inspire, um, or Dealer Raider even prior to that, but yeah. Dealer Inspire was big because now we were able to launch dealer websites off the cars.com platform. And, and so we can actually uh, launch more dealerships faster because we're using cars.com's backend technology and then make all the investment into service. And so I think dealers now feel that we provide the highest degree of service, but it's because we're using the backbone of cars.com. Mm. Yeah. And, and you saw Brian Kramer appraising vehicles with AccuTrade. Again, having appraisal technology is great, but now we can use the marketplace to bring interested sellers directly to your store. And so we're really connecting the marketplace business, which is a great business, but with enabling technologies and tools so that dealers can run their businesses more cost effectively, which in this coming environment, I think is more important than ever. Yeah, I think that's a big deal. You know, earlier this year, we got the opportunity to talk to Jamie Odershaw, 
of Dealer Raider, and you said Dealer Raider was kind of that first uh, acquisition for the Cars family. Um, and and talk about the reputation of dealers. And and I know this is a big passion point of yours. Actually, you know, even in the pandemic, you were you were a part of lobbying for dealers to to, to stay active. Big time. Um, and and even this year, like providing the NADA, providing the industry with some of the information that's necessary for consumers to, to really see like what dealers are doing for them. Can you talk a little bit about just how you're seeing the dealer reputation through dealer the, through the eyes of Dealer Raider and through the eyes of the consumer because you have that kind of two-sided marketplace to see the consumer's eyes. Yeah, I mean, I think um, as an industry, I, you know, I've said this publicly, I think we have a branding problem because when you look at the actual experience that's going on in each and every dealership across the country every day, it's absolutely wonderful, right? Mm. And it's improving every day. Sure, we have our missed opportunities, but as far as most retail businesses go, dealerships are some of the best run operations in the country. But unfortunately, you know, a few bad apples spoils the, 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 you know, the, the bunch and, and paints a broader reputational image that I don't think is aligned with our industry and where we have to go. And, and so, you know, generally what we want to do is help elevate the experience. And, you know, as an industry, most good operators haven't had to advertise for the past couple of years. Uh, it's been glorious, sure. right? And, yeah. and, and we love that, right? If you, can, if you can run the business spending less. But importantly, where I feel like rep rep reputation is foundational to our health as an industry is that we need to amplify our customer voices to let people know that we're the place you want to go. And when I say we're the place, I mean your dealerships, your stores. And, and Dealer Raider technology does that at scale. We're sitting on 10 million reviews, and, and we've got some new exciting things planned for next year that will elevate experience even more. And, and most marketplaces, by the way, sort of pit dealers against each other on right. price. Right. And, and I think weaponizing price, it, it's not healthy for our industry. It, 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 it starts you off painting a picture of d deceit or distrust. Yeah. And, I, and I don't think that's the way we are as an industry. And, and so I think reviews and reputation can absolutely elevate our industry. You know, you, you've always been, I mean, uh, dealer advocate, but you've also have this mentality like the rising tide um, lifts all ships, even in the technology space in general. Um, I'm curious on what your kind of like exhortation to the tech space would be as they serve auto dealers. What position and posture should they take to help the whole industry move forward? Meaning to other tech providers that do any kind of tech. Yeah, well, look, I think first and foremost, you want to put your customers' brands first. I'm really proud. If you look at every commercialcars.com has produced over the last 25 years, you know, we feature the dealer as the hero. At the end of the whatever commercial creative genius, the hero or the dealer is the hero. And, and, and I think, you know, that's not what most people in this industry do. They, they try to make it out as like, well, use our tech as the antithesis of going to the dealership. Mm. And, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, why are you perpetuating this, this false narrative? And so I'm really proud that like we actually like to show not only the dealership, but the people working in it as being, you know, we make sure they're clean cut, you know, well shaven, no offense. Um, <laughs> Is that really a rule? Or, or, or you Come know, on. the most knowledgeable person <laughs> about the transaction. Yes, you use cars.com, but we connect you to someone who tends to know more about the car than we do. Yeah, I think for you, you've, you've told us this, that, there's, there has to be this kind of handoff that there, that there is a, that there is kind of like that last mile experience. There's a dealer, there's a retailer on the other end of the journey of cars.com. And you all support some of that from a technology perspective, but um, I, you've been kind of encouraging dealers, like what does that customer experience? What does that last mile look like? Well, look, I, we, we have a lot of employees and they all mean well and do good, but, but I've had to even clarify to our own employees, like kind of our role in the ecosystem. And the way I've been describing it lately is like, look, Cars.com is a marketplace I view as pre-tail. It's where people are always going to go prior to retail. The notion that you're not going to comparison shop for a $30,000 automobile, <laughs> gang, is like, it's <laughs> never going to change. I've been told for 25 years that, oh, if we could just get rid of the third party marketplaces. Yeah. Shopping and research is like a permanent need for a ticket price level of this category. But, but that's our marketplace. Our enabling retail technologies through Dealer Inspire and AccuTrade and Credit IQ and Dealer Raider enable the dealership to run the business and complete the last mile. And I, I think that's the winning model because, you know, I, I hear all the OEM executives talk about wanting to bypass the retail channel. 
if anything we've learned in the last, call it four months, is that investors will lose patience on the amount of capital required to compete mm. in Nashville and in Los Angeles. And like, you just can't scale this business at a national le level in the operating costs. So, so this notion of having a two-tiered system, I know is the winning formula. We've got to work together using technology to out-execute those that think they can build it, you know, and go it alone. But, but over time, truth will prevail, and the retail system is, is the winning model. That's awesome. Well, Alex, I, I, I am a continually a fan, and I, I love that you are dealer first, and I appreciate you coming on and coming all the way here to Nashville uh, to hang out with us. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate so, you guys. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah, Don't go anywhere. Well We're live always. from Nashville at the Asodu Year End Extravaganza with more coming after the break. But first, Paul and Kyle once again head down to Broadway to check in with the locals. Automotive State of the Union. First question for you, when's the last time that you bought a car? Uh, November of 2022. Wow, so recently. So where did you buy it from? I bought it from a dealership in uh, Ohio. Tell me this, what was your favorite part about like shopping for and buying a car? My favorite part was uh, finding a salesman that was interested in just finding the good a good car, not not a, a salesman that just wanted to sell me a car. Because it was during the shutdown when everything was marked up like crazy. But I finally found a dealership that didn't want to mark up my car. Nice. Last question. I know you just bought a car. I don't know if you know this or not, but they're putting batteries in cars like crazy these days. EVs, right? Did you buy an EV or did you buy just like a gas-powered car? Electric vehicle. I bought a gas-powered car. All right. Would you ever consider buying an electric vehicle? No. <laughs> Why not? I mean, Henry Ford made a car with an engine that runs on gasoline for a reason. All right, and like, I don't want to plug my car in. <laughs> I, I already have enough trouble. Like, when it gets down to a quarter of a tank, we put gas in it. If I forget to plug my car in, it's like my phone. I can still get to my job if my phone's dead. If my car's dead, what am I going to do about that? <laughs> I love it. Welcome back. Our next guest is this Sony PlayStation 5. Oh. <laughs> when I brought this home to my house, my kid said, oh, you got us a Christmas present. I said, of course not. This is to give away to the Asota community. <laughs> why, is it, why we got to be about our kids in both of them? We're just ragging I, on our Well, kids. I mean, you know, they expected a PS5, and they, well, we got a PS5. They got to see it, and then There's, I took it away. And we're going to give it away today. Uh, this is uh, courtesy of our friends at Interactive Tell. So one lucky winner is going to have this. We will get it. To, can we get this to them before Christmas? I mean, can depends on where FedEx you are. Get them to, well, that's a big question. I mean, yeah. Danielle says Danielle, I can get it to them. If it. anyone can get this to you before Christmas, Danielle gonna, can do it. You two are going to be in the back of a cargo van like Jan, John Candy and Steve Martin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. And the winner of the PS5 is. Can we get a drum roll? I feel like we need a drum roll. Tom oh, roll. Drum roll. Yeah. Hey. Ooh. Antoine Harvey, sales manager hey. at Carter Myers Automotive. Wow. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> well, I don't know. It's been a show. Like, we talked in the beginning it's about it a being show. a year, and I think it's been a show. Actually, I think it's yeah. been a really good show. Don't worry. We're not wrapping up, everybody. We we're got not. plenty of time to go left. <laughs> we have plenty of time. It's been a really great show. Just to recap, just to recap, my team won the game. <laughs> 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 not not going to let you live that down, Polly boy. Had to tell him about it, You know, right? I'm going to be so thorough with the rules next year. I'm yeah, actually right. You can't write impressed. the answer on the board. I'm still impressed. Uh, <laughs> Alex drew game. two sock puppets, and he was like, fix stops! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. It was great. You need him to lay on Michael, you've cup. been getting some feedback from the community on your phone because, you know, you have people texting you, sending you messages, maybe on the live stream. What's the sentiment out there? Uh, most of them are complimenting my suit because they... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a little self-aggrandizing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm complimenting your pocket square still. Oh, I think that that's this just all fine. No, they're really loving it. They they feel like this is a fresh vibe, and they're all really enjoying it. Uh, they they love the 2030 skit. So that's yeah. good because that was one of those skits where we're like we're gonna pull this off, and we might really quickly understand whatever the cast of Saturday Night Live or Tonight Show feels like when they feel like no one's getting it. 
right? <laughs> Which is why you have this critical mass up here. We're like, well, at least we think it's funny when we thought of it, right? Thank you, Ben. For yeah, yeah, yeah. That ben too. now thinks it's funny. No, too. but literally, people They're were sending messages saying, no. like, if you know, you know, right? Yeah. You can search. It was in the year 2000. Conan, it's, it's a thing. It's Michael, a thing. what? Uh, we don't we don't really get to ask you. You know, you're you're more than just a funny, amazing, soulful, silky, wonderful voice. The wow. voice of automotive, as I call it, right? Wow. You're trying to really win next year, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, talk to us because you you have a tech company um, that that also does a, a marketing and and you've been in the the media side of the industry for a long time. What about some of the conversations that we've had today is really striking you as things that you're gonna you know be encouraging dealers as well as other partners to kind of listen to and heads up? Um, I think of that saying, "Tough times create tough people." Mm. And so that's kind of the, the healthy optimism that I'm, that I'm feeling. We can't do anything about what's going to happen in the coming years uh, as far as the news is concerned. What we can control, which I love the optimism here, is what, what can we do about that? They're, they're, we're not going to respond. We're going to take a proactive approach. And I really think that that's, that's the thing. I mean, we were talking about it on the podcast the other day, and I'm like, we can all speculate about what's going to happen in 2023, but <laughs> you remember how we just lived through the worst thing that can happen to humankind? A pandemic. And what did we do? We figured it out. Yep. Yep. And so I think, you know, that's cause for celebration that dealers should, uh, the whole community rather, should understand that we're much more powerful than perhaps sometimes we give ourselves credit for. Yeah. You know what I love about just not just the Asodu community, but also the, I think the automotive community as a whole. Like if you look at, if you were to take, you know, Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg and Automotive News and Asodu and like pin them all up against each other and then the LinkedIn, if you, if you could yeah. like aggregate LinkedIn posts from everybody across, yeah. you know, uh, across different industries. I think that the sentiment in auto is always chin up. Right? Always. That's that, a great that, that, way to that put there's it. A, that, that there, there's a looking forward. There's an eagerness. There's an, there's even an urgency to kind of see what's next. It's not all doom and gloom where everything's going to go bad. And, and I think that, you know, I've had the privilege of working for operators over my years that, like, it's like, hey, no matter what happens as an organization, as, as people, like, we, we're going to survive whatever happens, and we're going to not just survive, but we're going to thrive. And I think that, you know, the, the theme here today is, like, I haven't heard anyone be like, I don't know about dealers. They're going to struggle next year. <laughs> no, you know? <laughs> no, not in this industry. I mean, history is a great teacher. And when we look back through the history of the automotive industry, there has never been something that we didn't come out of on the other side stronger. So is there any single reason to believe that we would go through the next five years and still not come out with healthy organizations that are investing in people, that are thriving, that are growing? Like, I can't think of one reason not like we look through the news every single day right? right it's what we do with a soda we have a morning show where we kind of digest the news and we scan all the other industries retail industries and pop culture and technology and youtubers and the whole deal all of it yeah and i will say most of the time it, it's like you feel like you're out there with a tennis racket trying to swat away all the bad news and the people that want to convince you that that group is messing your stuff up and vice versa and you don't see that in automotive, which is why I think it's like the hidden gem and why we all gravitate toward it so much, because it is a refreshing place where people say, chin up, we're going to figure this out. Yep. We're going to have fun doing it. And we have each other. Yep. And that really is the, the truth. And, of it. And, and we're going to have challenges. There's going to be, you know, new opportunities between tech and customer experience. And we know that we're not the industry that everybody right now is jumping to be in or anything like that. But I really and we believe uh, and I think the people that have been on today so far believe like that is a trajectory that this uh, that this industry is on, uh, and we're just excited to be about it. But hey, look, we got a show to keep. Rolling, yeah, we are so. past the halfway mark by far. Um, that last man on the street was hilarious when she said <laughs> yes. Henry Ford made gasoline engines for a reason. <laughs> yes. Like I just didn't see that coming. We have some more man on the street for you because we really we need to know what the customers think. So let's go to man on the street. All right, we're out here in Nashville. Um, when was the last time you bought a car? Uh, during, the, during the lockdown. And where, where did you buy it? Did you buy it from a dealership, somebody else? Dealership, Beeman, it's a, it's a Camry, or Corolla, sorry. And and why did you choose to buy your car from there? You usually get a better deal. You usually get like, you get better like, kind of, you get kind of hooked up a little bit. Yeah. And, and usually you can trust it better. Would you consider buying a fully electric vehicle? Absolutely. What, what do you like about them? Uh, <laughs> The gas prices are crap, and I'm kind of a leftist kind of person. Like, I like, like no, I'm, I like, I would go green if I have to, if I can, whatever. So, but yeah, I mean, I, the Teslas are cool. Yeah. 
I do Uber, and they're 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 pushing to like make us rent one. Like they they'll give us like incentives and stuff. Make you rent an EV? Not make you, but if you want to, you can. Like it's like they'll give you a discount, like a like it's like a seventy five dollar off the week, you know, thing. So it's kind of cool. They're 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 trying to put their foot in the you know, in the green world too. All right, I know you got a gig to get to. Last question. If dealers could do something that would make the process the best for you, like picking it out, paying for it, and all that, do you want to buy it online? What do you want to do? I'd rather go in person. I'd rather talk to somebody face to face. I feel like that's still an important thing. Just makes you feel better. Yeah, I'll get online and look at it before I go, but I'd rather talk to somebody like I'm talking to you. Bam. That last note always hits. I love, I love it. it. I, I'm like, y'all just keep doing that, and then we'll be good. It'll be real fun. Um, I tell you what, I, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with the musical chairs thing here. I still haven't sat at the couch. So I feel like at some point I'm just going to reversal. Should I just kind of slide <laughs> yeah, over reversal. here? We'll just talk like this. Uh, hey, we've got some more guests, and, and we actually kind of need the couch for the next. We do need the round, couch. So. Yeah, let's <laughs> please welcome our next two guests who are going to be talking about streamlining your tech for marketing efficiency. Please welcome Peter Fong and Santosh Viswanathan. Santosh, this is the first time we've actually had more than like three words together, so I'm really excited to kind of <laughs> learn. <laughs> Peter and I have known each other for a long time. Guys, thanks so much for joining us uh, here on the live stream and, and the show. Um, you know, I, 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 we've kind of asked the question of everyone, so why not keep, keep the streak alive? But uh, what do the holidays look like for you all? Uh, and we'll start with you. What, what, is, what does these next couple weeks look like? Is it, is it just head down, we're in the dealership, or is there, is there fun to be had? It's a year end, so it's very busy for us. And of course, upon his invitation, we, I flew out here to talk to you. <laughs> As right. busy as it You're is. You're like, all right, here we go. We're here real we busy, but I'll be there, right? <laughs> Peter, what's your family? Like? Well, like Liza said earlier, we're all about tradition, and that's something that we, we look forward to every year, but something that we're starting new this year, and I told Sarah, Paul's wife, earlier that my kids are all of age now, so we're doing something in Philly called Tipsy Trolley. Oh, wow. Tomorrow, actually two nights from now, where we're going to get on a trolley at 9 o'clock in the evening, and we're going to spend two hours touring the, the city of Philadelphia and looking at all the lights. And yeah. BYOB, so the tipsy trolley, you get the rest of it. You know? Yeah. So we're looking forward to we, new tradition. If you haven't ever been to Nashville, you could have done that last night and tonight, too, because we got about 83 of them downtown, it. and it's quite a mess. It's actually, they, they joke about Nashville for it. Because so that's the new many. tradition yeah. that will start in 2022 and it. continue. Starting new you. traditions. That's oh great. Well, let's get into it. So, um, Santos, you know, you are, you're uh, operating in a couple different stores, right? Yeah. Um, but um, I, I think... We're having a lot of conversations in the industry about data and customer data and centralization and figuring out what is what is happening. And a lot of the conversations are around these big data sets, you know, large dealer groups and 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 the way that like people are using data to create customer experiences. But um, in in a smaller single point store, you've implemented um, a, a CDP to create efficiencies. What what led you to that, and 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 why are you why did you see that as an opportunity that you need to take advantage of being a single point store? Well, regardless of the size, single point or large, I think what Orbi brings to our table is first party data, which yes. is huge. These are the people that we want to be talking to, as opposed to being fed thousands and thousands of names and leads that mean nothing. It could be a bunch of students doing a school project, and we would get sold that as leads. Yeah. versus what Orbi brings to the table, first party data, very rich data, data set, which when you take the customer through the life cycle, they usually end up buying yeah. because it's relevant data. Yeah, about how many customers do you have in like one of your store's uh, data databases currently? Do you know that Thousands. kind of number? Thousands, yeah, right? For sure. Yeah, and so now you're taking those and kind of moving them through journeys as well as acquiring new data in, in this ecosystem. Correct. Right? Yeah. Correct. The first party data is, is important because those are the customers that have chosen us as the dealer to do business with. And yeah. then we just harness that data to eventually sell them a car, which is an important relationship. Yeah. Now, do you have a, a marketing department or a marketing person or, or, or are you leveraging technology to create those efficiencies like a marketing person? That's a good question. So when Peter and I first started talking, uh, we started talking about Orbi in terms of just data that morphed into 
for me becoming a virtual marketing office for me. So everything is now under one roof with no duplication, cost savings, and relevancy in terms of, you know, before a year would go by, another company would reach out to me, we would hire them. These two would not talk. It was just, it just became one, it was just snowballing into meaning nothing, as opposed to now having one house. When I go to them with, with a new idea, they tell me they were already doing it because they know it's all under one roof. Yeah. So now, it makes sense. Now, Peter, when, when you're talking to dealers and, and they're starting to explore this idea of marketing automation or customer data platform, what's, what are some of like the hesitancies that you're seeing? Or is it just kind of like, hey, this is a new world, let's, let's figure it out. What, what, in, in those conversations before someone is utilizing a platform like a customer data platform, what? Well, there's a lot of noise out there about CDPs, and that's probably one of the big buzzwords of 2022. And, and I think when you think about CDP, you know, I think most of them out there are, are small case CDP, customer data platforms, meaning a data platform that has customers. Your phone is that. But when you have a CDP, you truly have the ability to segment the activities you know, of what's happening on your website. Liza said it best this morning, which you talked about when they buy new dealerships, the first thing they do is listen, right? Well, that's what a CDP does. It listens to the signals of all the first party shoppers on a website. And once you learn from all that, then you can gain the efficiencies and, and target them with the right messaging. You want to give them the right messages based on what they're doing. So you know, I think the most important thing is that CDP is a small piece of it. I mean, that's just one element. And you heard a tool set earlier. It's all about being able to plug in this entire ecosystem because the best thing that can happen in 2023 is to allow our dealerships that know more about what's happening in all the different widgets out there. So many vendors out there selling different things. The best thing that can happen is to plug it all in together so that you can serve your customers better. That's yeah. really the name of the game. Yeah. Santosh, as, uh, as a lot of dealers, you know, we've got NADA earlier in the year and, and, and there's going to be marketing, uh, you know, platforms and CDPs and uh, digital retailing, everything else that uh, everybody's looking at. When, when you're talking with dealers in your 20 group or, or other dealers that you know, how are you encouraging them to uh, utilize tech to, to create these efficiencies? What's the encouragement as, as, as others lead into 2023 with tech? Well, there's a lot of confusion right now about what do we do? How do we go to market? How do we continue talking to our customers? And uh, you know, when we bring up at, within our 20 group, um, the name Orbi and what they do for us, it, it starts to make sense. Because when you go to a, like a show at NADA, there's thousands of vendors selling you many different wares. But how, how do you bring it all home to make sense for you? Mm. And like today, I was, before I got on here, I was, you know, we had a little, I had a little um, idea that I ran by a tool by phone today. And he, he thought about it today and he said, you know what, let's circle back next week and let's make it happen. See, yeah. that's the difference between just, you know, off the shelf kind of software versus these guys who can kind of work to tailor whatever it is that you need to make sense of the data. Yeah, I think that's that's a through line that I've seen uh, through a lot of technology platforms. And we heard Alex talking about this, that, you know, it's almost like everything comes back to people, right? Yeah, absolutely. That the relationships that you have, the way that people work with you, the service that you provide can, can extrapolate everything that you need out of technology. And I'm sure that your people are, are experiencing some of the efficiencies that you've yeah. gained even on the marketing side. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the marketing piece is important because all of this has to mean something to the consumer. Yeah. Because if you're singing a song that doesn't you know, resonate with them, they're not listening. And yep. so that's where we come in with, with, with a focused message to a focused audience that want to hear from us. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so what is your encouragement specifically to other dealers? It doesn't have to be tech, but as you're thinking into 2023, what's your encouragement to dealers? It's to have one solution to go to market with, which makes sense, rather than duplication of efforts and spending money in an environment where you know, things are slowing down for us. Mm. And at, that, at those times, it's important to, to save your dollars and to have a focused strategy. And that's what uh, Peter and company and Orbi and company bring to the table. That's awesome. Well, hey, look, I know that a lot of dealers are, are continually kind of trying to figure out the tech, the marketing, and, and in an industry slowdown, it's, it's important to just be thinking of these things. And guys, I really appreciate you joining us today. And uh, so. thank you for your insights for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Happy to be here. Thank you. Live from Nashville, this is the Asodu Year End Extravaganza with our final guest coming up after the break.
this is awesome. This is fantastic. Did you know that average car payments are at an all-time high? New car payments are over $700 per month and used car payments are almost $600 a month. This data point was brought to you by Recover, the wireless GPS theft recovery and lot management system that increases PVR and gets stolen cars back fast. <laughs> I don't know if it's me or it's you, but Michael, who's next? Hey, well, our final guest of the day is the CEO of Automotive Ventures and author of the brand new book, The Future of Automotive Retail. Please welcome Steve Greenfield. You never really know what we're going to get you into, do you, when you say yes? I, uh, this is not scripted, so I have no idea what they're going to throw at me. No, That's because true. have at it. We didn't even have talk at it. Yeah, <laughs> because we pretty much said, hey, we're doing a thing in Nashville. Show up. On the 20th. Will you come? He's like, yeah, I'll go. Of course. We had zero details. Yeah. Zero details. Okay. I think we had just, th this is what's funny, is we had just had a conversation about how you had had dinner in Vegas only mm -hmm. and had been in Vegas for so you're just I love you just up for I, just you kind show of up anywhere. Travel. Yeah. <laughs> That's very good very good any special holiday traditions it's my favorite question today so yeah. um I need to get a pair of Scott's socks cat socks because I have 10 cats in the house right now <laughs> All rescues. Did you have 10 earlier? Did you? Are you plus one from like two months plus ago? One. I'm plus because one. I thought it was okay, nine. Okay, I thought it was nine. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's never a dull moment in my house. But uh, we'll, we'll get to Toronto, back where I'm from, to see my mother and my sister for a couple of days. But can't leave the cats alone for too long because you never know what you're going to come back to. I can't imagine 10 cats. I can't imagine. Yes, yeah. he's like, I don't have to imagine. I'm it's, about it's to a, go home. It's not an ordinary life. It's for sure. It's not an ordinary <laughs> life at all. Well, that's good because you seem like you seem like a pretty orderly person, like very <laughs> measured, very thoughtful in the way you dissect situations. You so. just don't know me very well. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Well, that's the there startup we life. There have been so there's been so much motion in your world this year. Um, you know, from uh, you know pointing out new companies to invest in, from starting a dealer fund and democratizing a dealer investment. What what is kind of the one that has risen to the top? Because you have all these lanes going. Your newsletter is doing great. Um, what's kind of at the at the top of the heap? And, and I find there. myself I'm, I'm the chairman of a public company. We took a SPAC public last <laughs> December. You find and yourself. We, we, we found our target company, thankfully. Yeah. The SPAC market has not been stable. So yeah, a, a lot going on this year. But I, I don't know. I mean, I think that um, I appreciate the fact that at this point in my career, 22 years in, um, I'm having a different uh, uh, interaction with owners. Right? So now I can sit with owners who own one store or 15 stores and have an entirely different conversation about what, what's keeping them up at night and um, looking to the horizon three, five, ten years from now with these trends in the industry to try to anticipate which ones will impact them the most and, and how to prepare for those things. And it's something, you know, when I was on the quote unquote vendor side for 22 years, never had the opportunity really to interact with owners at all and, and definitely not sort of have them open up about their concerns, their right, challenges. Right, the are up from Correct. the beginning. Yeah, because we're selling them things. I'm not really selling them things any longer, right? Yeah. I, I can be a thought partner now in the future and how the future might unfold. What's the fear that, that comes up the most? Um, I think relevancy. Mm -hmm. Right, so par part of it is this, this, this friction between the manufacturers and the dealers, which has always existed, but it seems to be much more heightened over the last like 18 months, right? We're seeing the OEMs in many cases outside the U.S. move more to an agency model and definitely taking the opportunity under the guise of EVs to redefine the relationship with dealers. But then also it seems to be increasingly a game of scale. Right, single operators, and you know, uh, love hearing from Damon, who was up on stage earlier. But single operators really are, are saying there are advantages, cost advantages, and other advantages of having more stores. We heard from Liza earlier; she's seeing advantages from from tucking in more stores and building a bigger platform, so to speak. And I think that increasingly, the single store owner is going to be under pressure to find efficiencies that are only available to folks that own multiple stores. Relevancy. That's, leave it to you to solve it in like one word. That, 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 that's a good word. You know, as you as you're looking at, you know, because you've started this dealer fund, and it, and it's not just a dealer fund for what you kind of find. There's also a directive behind it that that you're asking those dealers to to say like, hey, this is the tech that that we need to lean into. What are, what are those dealers asking for, and and what are the, what is the tech that you're out there trying to to kind of solve for, find, or 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 help people create? 
Yeah, so, so multiple different areas, uh, but what Kyle's, Kyle, you're mentioning really is the fact that you know, we're allowing the dealers to drive strategy within this new fund, right? So spending time with a lot of progressive dealers to understand where, where they want us to go look for investments. I, I would put broadly into two, two categories. One is, where, where are dealers today leaving money on the ground? So for example, you know, um, leads aren't typically followed up uh, on after seven days. We're onto the new leads, but we know there's gems in those leads. You know, I, I have many dealers that ask me, hey, can you automate a process to, to follow up with a consumer that's either turned down F&I products, but still might have the intention to buy F&I products, but seven, 14, 28 days later, or turn down service. I know that car still needs that work done. Mm. They've turned it down at, at point of sale, but I, I know I can go back to them and in a kind, nurturing kind of way, get them to come back into the store and get the service done. And then the flip side, which I think is going to be a big thematic area over the next couple of years that we get excited with is, is cost takeouts. And we've heard a little bit of that on stage today, finding efficiencies. But I believe you know, the dealership of the future is going to be able to sell and service more cars with fewer employees and find efficient ways to do more and be more productive, effectively looking at their cost structure and, and taking costs out of the system. Alex mentioned that earlier when he was on stage. I think that's gonna be a big thematic area that over the last 10 years, we haven't seen a lot of vendors at NADA focus on helping dealers take costs out. No. I think we're gonna see this whole new thematic area over the next five years, and, and we wanna be on the forefront of that, finding companies and investing in companies that help dealers take costs out of their system. I mean, is that is that just a just kind of a derivative effect of being so profit profit rich right now, right? Why cut costs when I can keep my foot all the way down on the throttle? Yeah, well that's what I feel a lot of dealers are sort of like, don't mess with success over the last two years. Don't change anything. Well, you're wasting money. It's like, I don't care. I'm making more than I'm wasting. That's right, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Just don't, don't, don't touch anything. Don't touch the dials, but I, I do believe we're gonna come out of that. That may have bred some pretty unhealthy habits mm -hmm. on the cost side that won't really get exposed. Like, you know, what Warren Buffett says, you know, no, he, no, no one knows who's swimming without swim trunks until the tide goes out. <laughs> and I think, you know, when profits come under a little bit more pressure, we're gonna see maybe dealers needing help taking costs out of the system. So part. shifting, because uh, obviously you're, you're focused on dealers and, and those conversations, but a lot of the communication and, and the just like insights that you allow the automotive industry to see are not just EV, but also all the way to autonomy or mm -hmm. alternate travel. Um, you know, what, what, let's start with what was the reason for kind of like having that as a layer that you added to kind of like dealer, you know, it's, it's kind of started dealer tech, you know, uh, dealer public public valuations, that kind of thing, and you've transitioned to kind of give dealers the access to know what's going on in that other side. What was the reason for that move? Well, because I think that you know, we 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 need to put things into the perspective of you know, all, all of us are working on helping transport people by ground transportation. Yep. But there'll be other ways we move goods, not non-humans, around. And um, that can be via, via ground, but it also can be via water or via air, right? So I think th these things will, I'm not going to say they'll converge in the future, but they'll be, you know, for example, I, I came from Atlanta this morning, four-hour drive. I was like, do I fly up? As much as I love Delta, I mean, <laughs> yeah, do, I, do, I, do I fly I up or do you. I drive up? Well, actually, I went to Enterprise this morning, rented a car, picked up the car and drove up here today, and I'll drive back this evening. But I think there are different uh, modes of transport that are gonna start to converge, and uh, consumers are gonna be able to make those, to those choices. I, I think all of us have to look at sort of like how we move humans and goods, not only through automobiles, because as autonomy hits and electrification, et cetera, there'll be other choices. And I think we'd be short-sighted to only look at it through the, with the blinders on of how we've always served these types of customers. Can you just... Uh Tell us what the best way is to connect with you. We haven't done this the whole show, but I love your newsletter so much that I want people to know about it. Well, if you can't find me, I'm not doing a good job. Right, so, <laughs> right, that's so true. Partially ah, thanks to you Here guys. you are. Partially there thanks to you guys. Yeah, yeah. But um, automotiveventures.com, you can find me on LinkedIn. The best way, you can subscribe for a free, free newsletter on automotiveventures.com. And uh, as always, happy to have conversations with anyone about the industry. Steve, thank you so much for coming all the way up here and spending some time with us. <laughs> as usual, down for anything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
it's why we were actually we got this moment during the middle of the show and we were like goes really fast once you once start, you start. <laughs> right fun, yeah. all the planning yes. and all the hundreds of hours that went into planning it and we're at the end of the show yeah and you know i think that if we were to sum up the year right we had a year but i think we can all say in this community we had a really really good year yep. people came together like they never came together our community has grown by a lot we have a lot of folks that are standing here actually why don't why don't we invite everybody up if yeah. you're sitting out there and you want to come up, come hey, on up. If you're just sitting, if you're a part of the up. live studio audience, you can come Why on up. Why don't you up. come on up on the come stage? On hey, as we head into next year, we can tell you we, uh, the Automotive State of the Union community is going to be doing a lot. Uh, we're planning uh, some live events. Lots in of live events. Arlington and Tampa and Atlanta and Baltimore. So if uh, if you're not connected to us, sign us sign up for our daily email at asotu.com. We'd love to just, come see us uh, at one of our events. Come see us at one of our events. We want to see you at an event this year. Uh, we we just love sharing time and space with people. Uh, whether it be a stage like this, we we love having our friends from across the industry. It's it just makes me smile. It does. It does. Well, thank you for joining the live stream today. Um, on behalf of all of our families, thank you. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we'll see you in 2023. Gotta thank Al Kutri and the Troublemakers. Woo!